You may have seen many other YouTube videos claiming that a projector, sometimes marketed as laser TV, can replace your television. These videos have racked up hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of views. But are these videos telling you the truth? Let's find out through a projector versus TV side by side comparison. On your left is a top of the line Samsung 4K Ultra Short Throw or USD Triple Laser Projector, which retails at £4,000 excluding ARR screen. And on your right is a 98 inch 4K QLED TV from TCL that can be bought for £3,600 or €4,000. Let's start this demonstration with all the blinds in this large conference room closed. And I've lowered the backlight on the TCL QLED LCD TV to roughly match the maximum brightness that could be generated by the UST projector without blowing out highlight detail. If I open the blinds for one of the windows quite far away from the displays to let a small amount of light into the room, hopefully you can see that black level on the projected image was already slightly elevated, resulting in lower perceived contrast. Even though we are using a high quality 100 inch ALR or ambient light rejecting screen that's meant to help maintain contrast and colors in a well lit room. As I progressively open the blinds of more windows in the room, here's how the projector and TV looked with two windows open, then three windows open, then four windows open. The blacks on the projected image would gradually become grayer and grayer with the picture appearing more and more washed out on screen, whereas the 98-inch TCL QLED TV had no problem hanging on to its blacks and colors despite the presence of ambient light in the room. In fact, even with many window blinds open, the TCL 98C735 had so much light output in reserve. Full screen brightness measured 460 nits in SDR mode on this particular unit, we could simply increase the backlight on the television to counteract the ambient light in the room to present a highly watchable picture. Obviously, due to our camera's limited dynamic range, we had to lower the camera exposure to properly capture the brightness difference between the triple laser projector and the TV. Now, even in a pitch black room, most TVs, including this 98-inch TCL QLED, will have one unassailable advantage over any ultra short show laser projector, namely HDR. Put simply, the limited light output of even the brightest UST triple laser projector simply cannot do HDR justice, as you can see from these side-by-side -side comparisons using the opening sequence of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which has been graded to 1000 nits as well as the scene from the 4K Blu-ray of Pan which contains elements as bright as 4000 nits. Because of how aggressively most projectors have to tone map HDR to be squeezed within its modest light output, even HDR titles which have been graded conservatively to an SDR equivalent of 200 nits, for example Blade Runner 2049, would look significantly darker on the projector compared to any semi-respectable HDR television. Let alone the TCL 98C735 which is capable of 800 nits on a 25% window and 550 nits full screen in HDR mode. Of course, some projector enthusiasts will say that the projectors in commercial cinemas aren't that bright anyway. But you have to understand that theatrical presentations are graded differently to the home video release consumers get. The theatrical grade you see at cinemas is simply not found in consumer content, not on 4K Blu-rays, nor on streaming platforms. When it comes to next-gen console gaming, no ultra short throw laser projector on the market supports 4K 120Hz gaming as far as we are aware at the time we published this video in May 2023, while the TCL 98C735 could do so through one of its two HDMI 2.1 ports. It's not all one-way traffic though. Because of how the image from the USD projector is cast on an AR screen, there won't be any reflections at all even with light sources shining directly on the screen. But of course, the picture will look extremely washed out. Viewing angles are also wider on the projected image. Compared to the 98-inch TCL C735 equipped with a VA-type LCD panel which produces deep blacks by LED LCD standards at the expense of viewing angle. 
In case you're wondering why the picture on a 98-inch TV appeared slightly larger than that on a 100-inch projection in this side-by-side -side comparison, it's because the feet of the TCL 98C735 prevented the TV from being placed flush to the wall. Also, TCL who arranged this UST projector versus TV demonstration at their Poland office did not have time to align the projector image exactly to the ARR screen. Bottom line is, never trust a TV manufacturer to set up a projector screen. Nevertheless, I have checked that the settings on the UST projector were the brightest and most accurate possible, and the outcome will remain the same regardless of what projector you use, what screen you use, and how well set up the combo is. A TV will always deliver noticeably better brightroom performance and HDR presentation than a projector. Of course, UST projectors have the advantage of being lightweight and logistically easier to transport through narrow doors and stairways, but you still need to install an ARR screen to obtain the best image, which adds to the cost, making the 98-inch TCL C735 priced at £3,600 a more appealing proposition that provides superior picture quality, as long as you can fit the giant TV into your house. With this comparison out of the way, Let's proceed with a technical review of the TCL 98C735. With peak white aligned to 120 candelas per square meter, black level measured 0.018 candelas per square meter on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern with local dimming disabled, amounting to a native contrast ratio of above 6500 to 1. Of course, the TCL 98C735 features full array local dimming or FALD to improve contrast performance even further and we counted a total of 192 independently dimmable zones in a 24x8 configuration. The local dimming algorithm slightly favoured blooming suppression over outright accuracy, with the halation around the bright subtitles in this challenging campfire scene from The Revenant handled very well without significant backlight fluctuations or crushing of shadow detail. The algorithm would dim down small bright elements to reduce blooming artefacts, partially contributing to the circumferential vignetting seen on the rapidly expanding white circle in our own custom-ordered ABL test pattern. After calibration, SDR color accuracy measured well on a 1022 APL pattern, with an average delta error of just above 1.5 on this color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured, and only one color exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3 translating to largely natural and cinematic colors in real-world content. In case you're wondering why we used a 1022 APL pattern for measurement, that's because with local dimming set to high, which is necessary for the deepest blacks and highest contrast performance, SDR gamma tracking on the TCL 98C735 would vary with different APLs, and we found that a 1022 APL pattern corresponded best with real-world viewing material. Even with motion clarity disabled, the TV correctly performed 5.5 pull-down to present slow panning shots in 24fps content accurately without telecynic judder. And should you choose to engage motion clarity, TCL's MCFI or Motion Compensated Frame Interpolation did not introduce noticeable interpolation artifacts in 24p material. We did see some micro stutter and frame skipping in 50Hz broadcast with motion clarity enabled so it's best to keep the setting off. Upscaling veered on the soft side with some fizziness, but hopefully not many owners will be watching standard definition content on such a big screen. Native 10-bit gradation was decent for a TV using a MediaTek HDMI 2.1 SoC without coprocessor. Owners can use the gradation clear decontouring filter to reduce in-content posterization, although the high setting would erase too much fine detail so if you absolutely have to engage gradation clear for non-pristine content, low is the setting we would recommend. Interestingly, when we first put up this overscan test pattern, we thought the TCL 98C735 was cropping away at least one pixel along each side, even with the overscan setting disabled. It turned out that a part of the front glass was obscuring the rear backlight when looked at from an angle which is inevitable on such a huge display. The size will always be off-axis to your eyes when you watch the 98-inch television straight on. 
This is also the reason why in terms of screen uniformity, the sides would always appear slightly darker than the center, caused in part by the narrower viewing angles of the VA LCD panel. The eagle-eyed among you may have spotted some dirty screen effect or DSE on the review sample, which, to be fair, was not as bad as some previous TCL LED LCD TVs we've encountered over the years. For HDR, peak brightness measured 720 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 550 nits full fill. Although due to the inner workings of local dimming, the highest luminance was achieved on a 25% window, exceeding 800 nits, delivering impactful HDR especially in high APL scenes. The spectral power distribution revealed beautifully distinct red, green, and blue waveforms typical of quantum dot technology, allowing for DCI-P3 color gamut coverage of 96% in UV terms and rec 2020 coverage of 77%. Like on Samsung TVs, the TCL98C735 adapted its HDR10 cone curve according to maximum mastering display luminance or max MDL metadata which can cause HDR movies which have been graded conservatively within a 4000 nit container to look slightly darker than reference. New for 2023, TCL has expanded the options within its dynamic tone mapping setting. Detail priority would retain more specular highlight detail at the expense of APL or average picture level. Brightness priority would prioritize APL over bright highlights, while balance was somewhere in between. Since all three options would still brighten midtones and shadows excessively from reference levels, hence deviating from the creative intent, our preference is to keep dynamic tool mapping off. Another new setting we discovered on the TCL98C735 was the HDR peak brightness option under the expert calibration submenu. By entering a peak brightness value that's specific to the panel, this setting allows calibrators and owners who have access to a light meter to obtain more accurate PQ EOTF tracking. You can see here how the EOTF curve was modified if we submitted hypothetical values of 500 nits and 900 nits respectively, just for illustration purposes. In terms of HDR formats, the 98-inch C735 supports vanilla HDR10 and HLG, not to mention HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision IQ. Next, gaming. But before I talk about input lag, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Since the pandemic, some streaming providers including Netflix have throttled the bitrate of certain shows, especially in Europe, resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix at higher bit rates with better picture quality. Besides VPN, the new Surfshark One package also includes Surfshark Search, a lightweight search tool that lets you search the web without a trace. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HTTV Test, you'll get 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put a link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay, in game mode, input lag measured 13 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, dropping to a super responsive 5.5 milliseconds at 120 frames per second. Just like on the TCL C835 and C935, the default local contrast setting in game mode was low, so you will have to change it to high to unlock the best local dimming performance and highest peak brightness from the TV. Fortunately, without any increase in input lag. The SoC remains the same MediaTek MT5889 chipset, therefore only 2 out of 4 HDMI ports are HDMI 2.1, each supporting the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. However, TCL has at least managed to migrate eARC functionality to one of the two 4K 60Hz HDMI 2.0 ports on the 98C735, thus truly freeing up the two HDMI 2.1 ports for those intending to use eARC with an external soundbar or home theater system. HDIG can be engaged by summoning the new look game bar 2.0, clicking on menu, then clicking on the toggle. With HDIG engaged, 
the clipping point for max TML or maximum tone map luminance and max FF TML or maximum full frame tone map luminance parameters were set at 750 nits and 800 nits respectively on the TCL 98C735 review sample, hence preventing display side tone mapping from diluting the HDR impact. Although just like outside of game mode, the HDR presentation was slightly brighter than the ST2084PQ standard. To enable VRR support on the TV, you first have to go into the settings menu, click on channels and inputs, click on inputs, then scroll all the way down and click on FreeSync, which worked well to reduce tearing and frame drops in VRR games during the limited time we had testing the 98C735. Due to the non-Pentonic MediaTek chipset, naturally Dolby Vision gaming support from the Xbox Series X only went up to 4K 60Hz, but unlike Sony, TCL has at least provided a Dolby Vision game mode to allow for lower input lag. Armed with two 15W downfiring speakers and a 20W woofer around the back, the 98-inch TCL C735 delivered above-average sound with decent bass and dialogue clarity which was sufficient for casual viewing, although we did crave a bit more low-end response. Note that just like on last year's C83 and C93, the mute icon will never disappear upon muting the volume, so you would have to increase volume to 1 to make the icon go away. Despite its model number, the TCL 98C735 is intended to be sold through 2023, and so carries some new UI features including a quick settings menu that pops up along the bottom of the screen, not dissimilar to what's first seen on Sony Android TVs. You can add and remove individual options on the quick settings menu, though at the time we published this video in May 2023, there seemed to be no straightforward way to rearrange the items such that the more frequently used settings are placed in our preferred order at the front. To sum up, the TCL 98C735 offers a big screen experience at an affordable price. Naturally, its image quality won't be as good as TCL's higher-end mini-LED TVs, let alone self-emissive OLEDs from other manufacturers. But then again, no other TV can boast a screen real estate of almost 100 inches at a price of merely £3,600 or €4,000. Featuring a high-contrast VA-type LCD panel, 192-zone full array local dimming, cotton dot colors, Decent factory calibration, up to 550 nits of full screen brightness, multi HDR support, as well as low input lag and two HDMI 2.1 ports capable of 4K 120Hz HDR VRR, the TCL 98C735 will beat any ultra short throw laser projector in most aspects of picture quality, and so it receives our recommended best value award. USD projectors do have their own advantages over a TV, such as portability zero reflections and wider viewing angles, but to be honest, it's a bit like scoring a consolation goal after Man City has put four past your team. If you are willing to sacrifice a bit of screen size, TCL is even releasing an 85-inch mini-LED TV with significantly more local dimming zones for only £2,000 or €2,300. To find out more, please watch our coverage video by clicking here.